Good day, dear brothers and sisters in Christ. The bishops start formulating their plans for dealing with the impending change. When they see how old and unwell the Pope is, Vatican-focused journalists have already noticed the cardinals, moves and are speculating about who may succeed Francis. Additionally, they are particularly worried about this election because it carries very significant implications for the future Pope. First, it's unclear if Francis would stick to his course, given that his papacy was more disruptive than others. Second, since there are clear indications of the start of the trial amid the uncertainty, there are also prophecies that emerge as divine guides for our time. We shall discuss here what the prophecies have to say about the Church and the Pope in the context of our current day. And considering the foreseeable future, what strategies are liberals and conservatives using to find Francisco's successor for predictions about the popes, those of Garabandal, St. Malachi, St. Pius X and Fatima are still applicable today. Conchita de Garabandal was told by a lady in the 1960s that with the demise of Joe in 23, there were only three remaining popes plus one who was excluded from counting. Due to his brief papacy, the end of times would then arrive. It suggests that heaven intervenes to weaken Satan's influence. A period of peace will arrive after tremendous affliction and the world's rebirth that follows. Since the four pontificates that the Virgin mentioned have already gone, Francis's Pope falls at the end of time. Rather, it is its commencement, and the onset of the tribulation will coincide with the next Pope, St. Malachi's prophecy, which dates to the 12th century, is the second noteworthy one. He provided a motto and a few succinct Latin words to identify each of the 112 popes, starting with Celestini II in 1143. Furthermore, the portrayals of him are true overall. Pope 110 be recognized by the words of the work of the Son that he used to address John Paul. Glory of the olive tree is the motto on page 1111, and Benedict 16 is identifiable in it. The last motto follows, and Malachi does not assign a number to it, instead closing the list as if there were no more popes. Peter the Roman is its motto, which reads as follows, the terrible judge will judge the people, and Peter the Roman will reign during the final persecution of the Holy Roman Church, shepherding his flock through many tribulations before the city of the Seven Hills is destroyed. The last phase in terms of temporal sequence, Francisco, would be the pontificate's corresponding person, however, using the golden ratio, the 20th century Jesuit theologian father. One Monwell Agartua concluded that this motto most likely included to pontificates, one would be the Pope, who would rule during the period of the Roman Church's persecution and suffer greatly while tending to flock. He refers to him as in persecution and says he was in charge throughout the dark period. The last motto, number 113, is Petrus Romanus, which refers to the pontiff in power at the moment of Jesus Christ's intervention and the end of the tribulation, just before the victory of the Immaculate Heart of Mary, the New Pentecost and the Peace Era. However, there is an alternative reading that claims that two of Agartua's mottos relate to groups of pontiffs rather than individual pontiffs, following Benedict XVI. A group of popes would face suffering and persecution. These popes would be known by the motto in persecution. And after that, there would emerge a new group to whom the motto Petrus Romanus is appropriate. This group would rule from the time of peace until Jesus Christ's second advent which will occur several centuries later. St. Pius is the subject of the third prophecy that is pertinent, but he will suffer a terrible death after a little reprieve. This escape and sacrifice are still to come. Furthermore, Pius is the name that conservative popes typically choose to use, so if he were named Pius XIV, as you indicate, it would be a conservative pontificate. Finally, is the Fatima vision which is a component of the third secret that the Vatican disclosed back in 2000. 
that vision has several keys, a fake pope or another bishop clothed in white, appears beside a persona labeled as the pope. It suggests that there may be a split in the reign of two popes. The pope is martyred along with other consecrated and devout individuals, which is the second important factor. This is connected to Maria Julia Johannes and other prophecies. Many predict that there will be a pope who escapes the Vatican. During world fighting the third persecutions and martyrdoms, social unrest and fighting resulting in half of Rome being destroyed, and the Pope being captured and executed. What do we have now? Taking into account these simplified prophecies that we are experiencing the same suffering and persecution as the Popes, there may be a schism in the future as it will become more obvious that there are two churches, one fake and one authentic. Amid a major European conflict, the incoming Pope or his successor will have to escape Rome, be executed by hanging, and see the Vatican captured and demolished. Additionally, the next Pope or his successor would have a conservative outlook. In other words, the liberal tenor of Francis's papacy would not be upheld. Does this imply that a conservative will be Francis's immediate successor? Not always. It can be the one after that, or the one after that, considering that Francis appoints 75% of the cardinal electors, he is being held back to ensure the continuation of his dynasty. He also promoted liberal bishops to the cardinalate. Additionally, he is pressing the pace to bring in more progressive practices inside the church, such as the fiducia supplicants and the senal church, but the Conservatives are also hedging their bets. Early in 2024, a paper titled The Vatican Tomorrow, purportedly coming from a Conservative Catholic Cardinal, began to circulate among Cardinals. It states that recovering and re-establishing the realities that have been gradually lost or distorted among many Christians must be the goal of the future pontificate. It also states that salvation is available to everyone, but only by Jesus Christ that God is both a compassionate and just being, that he cares deeply about every human existence, that he is both a judge and a forgiving being, and that he is both a saviour. That man is a creation of God, not of himself, that he is a being endowed with intelligence, free choice, and an everlasting destiny. In addition to emotions and cravings, that knowledge of the universe and human nature may be gained by reason and divine revelation, which include unchangeable objective truths, that the scriptures, which contain God's word, are trustworthy and infallible, that sin is real and has deadly consequences, and that the church is charged with the responsibility and authority to make disciples of all nations, and that there are repercussions for not gladly accepting this job of missionary and salvific love. That concludes the future pontificate prophecies and how conservatives and liberals are arranging themselves for the upcoming conclave. Furthermore, I want to know if you believe that the next pope will be a liberal or conservative.